Hey everyone, Eric here. And today I want to share with you a few of my tricks for working with and editing images on top of terrain. So when we have images in SketchUp, first of all, um, that's something that we should all be used to or have tried once or twice. But when you add images on top of terrain, it can get a little bit tricky, especially because an image that's been projected on top of a mesh is essentially more than one image. It's an image applied to all these different faces. So what happens when you want to go in and make edits? Um, I want to share with you a few tricks that's going to make that process of editing or replacing images on train a little bit easier right now. So what I've got here is, well, first thing I need to do is I need an image and I need some train. So I've got my add location tool uh, up and running, and I've got this kind of cool little peak here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab that. So I'm going to select a region. And I'm going to point out really quick that you have this ability here in, at least if you're using more of a recent or later version of SketchUp, that you can tile the boundaries of images. And so tile boundaries. Now that's kind of important for a reason, which I'll show you in just a second, because that's going to be the resolution. We're going to talk about resolution here. Usually you want as best resolution as you can, um, but then that's going to come with some trade-offs. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm just going to import that at the highest resolution that I can get. Um, for my little study that I'm going to work on. Might take a second, that's okay. And there it is. Now that is actually just the flat image. So I'm going to open up my tag so we can get the terrain and we can get what's called the snapshot or the flat image. And by default, I'm just going to go, since I'm going to make some changes, I'm going to unlock both of those. They come in locked by default. And I like to move my flat image a little higher. I like to keep that up above the terrain and you'll see why I just like to work a little bit higher. So I've got both of those turned on. So what I mean by working with images on terrain, I want to give you an example in this case where I like this image, but I'm going to be honest with you, the, the I mean, I like the quality of the image and I like just sort of what, how it sits on the terrain, but the water looks a little bit dark. And so I really want to kind of edit it and have a little bit more control over the image itself. Now, this is where it gets tricky. This is why I wanted to do this video, is that if I turn from face style with textures to face style, um, which is called shaded, you can see that what's actually happening here is that it's tiling multiple textures. And I've also got my colors and model open already. So if I sort of select this one right here, it's actually bringing up this image. So that's sort of the part, that's sort of this lower part of the, um, of the terrain. And it's not just the terrain image that shows that's made up of multiple images, it's also going to be the snapshot as well. So even on the flat version, you can see that it's the same. We've got these multiple images that make up uh, this higher resolution, and that gives us higher resolution. Now, so here's what I want to do, though. I want to edit this. Now, if I go to edit this, the challenge is, of course, is that it's broken up into pieces. So I would have to go in and edit each one of these individually. Now, I don't really want to do that, but if you turn on your hidden geometry, View Hidden Geometry. Sometimes it's uh, easier, easier to see the lines when I turn the textures off completely. You can see that there's an option here, which I, you know, it actually took me kind of a while to, I didn't know you could actually do this. It took me a while to, once I figured this out, I was like, this is kind of handy. And then you can right click it and this option doesn't show up unless you go back to the textured mode. So I'm going to go back to Shaded with Textures because you actually need to be able to see the textures for this. And with everything still selected, I can right click and a new option comes up and it's called Combine Textures. So if you click Combine Textures, what it's going to do, it's going to take all of these multiple textures and combine them into one. Now, if you're worried, I'm going to say no, I'm going to cancel on this for just a second, because if you're worried about the resolution, then you may want to say, you know what, I need the highest resolution. That's why I tile these images in the first place. Then you may want to be safe and just say, well, you know what, I'm going to make a copy just as a backup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this one there and you can see that's got my full resolution. And then I'm going to come into this second one. And I'm going to right click this and I'm going to say combine textures. And this time I'm going to say yes. So do you want to erase the interior edges? Yes. I just want it to be one texture, one face. And you'll see why because I want to make some edits to just one texture, not multiple textures. Now in this case, if I zoomed in here a little bit, you can see there's a little bit of pixelation on the plants. Um, so just kind of take a, a look at the level of detail. If you're zoomed out, it looks pretty good. But if you zoom way in, yeah, you'll see that it does pixelate a little bit because of that combining the textures. And here's the one that's not that was um, before it was combined. 
So just a little bit sharper detail. You lose a little bit of information if you do this. That's why I thought, well, maybe I'll keep a backup copy just in case. But actually, I think right now for me, it's more important to have them combined. So now when I click my thumbnail, or sorry, when I click my eyedropper, it shows up here in my colors and model as just one image. So I can click edit. And then when you choose to edit it, it's one thing it's gonna do is I wanna choose edit a second time. But before I do that, if you haven't done this already, I wanna point out that under preferences, applications, you can choose your default image editor. In this case, I'm using Adobe Photoshop because I just wanna make some color changes. So I've already got that selected. In this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna right click, choose edit of the new combined material. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna choose edit a second time. It's gonna send it automatically to Photoshop for me. So that's kind of cool. It sent it straight to Photoshop. Now here, I'm just going to add a few correction layers. In this case, I'm not sure, I think it's a little dark. So I'm gonna boost the brightness up just a little bit. And then I think the color balance maybe needs a little bit less yellow, you tell me. I think maybe have maybe a little, sorry, not red. Um, yeah, maybe just a little greener, a little bluer, a little less yellow. I think that looks pretty good. And lastly, I want to really pop the color of the ocean. So I'm going to I'm going to deselect the shrub here, and I'm just going to try to select. I'm trying to select just the water. And if I was doing this proper, I would spend a little bit more time doing this, and I'm doing this pretty quick. So in this case, what I'm going to do is do one more, and I'm just going to boost the saturation of the water up so that it's just nice and it's nice and happy. So when I'm happy here, I can do two things. I can either save this image as, and now if I knew I was gonna make further edits or I wanted multiple variations, I could do a save as and save that to something like my desktop. Or if I know I'm only gonna make one edit, I can just hold all of my layers here. I can just merge them. So if you go layer, come down. If you're familiar with Photoshop, merge layers. So if you're doing corrections as corrective layers, um, as adjustment layers, you can just merge it. And then in this case, what I would do is say file, save. And once I do that, SketchUp, watch what happens in SketchUp. There you go. It automatically replaced the image with a new one. I'm going to hide this. This is our old one, just in case we need it. I don't think we do. I'm just going to hide it. But now I've got my new, brighter, happier image. Now, Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you that one more time, and I'm going to show you because there's two ways to do this. Let's undo that. Let's say I had a Photoshop file and I want to make some other changes. In this case, I'm going to select inverse. Who knows? Maybe I just want to come over here and just take the saturation out. It's all about the water. In this case, I want to just pull the saturation out from my rocks. Um, I'm just going to do another save as version. And instead of just merging that and saving it so that SketchUp automatically updates. I'm just going to save this as a JPEG here to the desktop. I'm going to call this terrain black and white. And there we go. So now I've got a JPEG on my desktop. Here, I, that's kind of cool thing is if I had multiple versions of this, I could just go ahead and sample that again. And instead of choosing edit and making the changes straight in Photoshop, I can just load it from, in this case, my desktop where I've saved um, that black and white version. So whether you do it straight in Photoshop or you load it and you have multiple versions, either way it works. Now, once you've got it in here, I don't know whether you like the black and white or not, I'll let you be the judge. Now the trick is, is to get it on top of the train. So the first thing you wanna do is go into your group. So go into your image group that was originally the location snapshot, not the location terrain, and double check it by going texture, projected. So what you want to do is make sure that the texture is projected. And then from there, we can sample this texture. And then I would go into this group. And it doesn't matter right now if it's made up of multiple images, because what I'm doing is, is I'm going to replace all those multiple images, and I'm going to replace it with just one image. So I'm just going to grab that one. And I'm just going to come in here. And if I turn my textures back on, and just give it a second, and paste. And there it is. So it didn't auto replace on the terrain. And the reason why is because the terrain was still made up on the multiple images. To me, it's kind of always nice to work with a flat image first, and then you make those adjustments to it. You make that edit. And when you're ready, you bring that down or you, pay, you just basically sample and then paste 
onto that lower terrain. And that's cool. If I don't need that, I can just toggle that off. And now I'm ready to diagram or I'm ready to do um, some mapping or whatever it is that I wanted, sort of this color or stylized uh, image of my terrain that I thought would be cool for, for my study purposes. So that's it. Pretty quick. I mean, in this case, you don't necessarily need to use Photoshop, but you definitely want to have an image to swap it out with. For example, if you found a terrain image from a different source and you just thought, oh, I like the satellite image, I want to go back in time, or I want to hand draw over the top of it to show my notes, whatever the process is that you use where you want to bring in a different image or you want to make changes to the images that you have on your terrain, this is a great process to use and also a one to think about and to keep in mind because like I said, it comes at a trade-off. Uh, you may, depending on the size of your area, you may have to use that right-click combined textures technique or trick and you know you you may lose a little bit of pixels in resolution and ultimately it really just depends on what you're doing with the image and what is more important but either way don't be afraid to get in there make some changes and play around and have some fun make this terrain your own and with that said i will leave you with a big thank you let us know in the comments if you like this trick, if you've used it, if you didn't know the combined textures trick, that's relatively new to me and I've been working in SketchUp for a long time. Let us know your feedback in the comments below and uh, we'll make sure to read those and respond. So thank you so much. See you next time.